Hi everyone, Faiket Luari from Uncensored Truth Channel. Uh, it's been a while, I've not done a new video, so I think it's time. It is time. And today is very powerful, simply because, uh, as some of you know, uh, I'm a spiritual son of Prophet Jerome Fernando, a very powerful prophetic ministry, followed by signs, wonders, healings, you name it. Powerful, really powerful. But I also notice that many people, when they hear the word prophetic or prophet, people are a bit sensitive. You know, uh, <clears throat> when the prophetic moves, you know, and, and the prophet starts telling you uh, what has been happening to your life and stuff like that, people get a bit, oh my God, is it, is it biblical and stuff like that? So if you deny what the prophet is doing is right or wrong, you are denying the ministry of Jesus. Let me repeat again. If you are denying or are skeptical about the prophetic ministry, you are denying and be skeptical about the ministry of Jesus. I'm not going to many examples. For this video, I'm, choos I'm choosing only one story of the Bible, which is very clear regarding the power of the prophetic. And this story is a very common story. Most of you have heard this story. It's the story when uh, I'm referring to the book of John, chapter 4. Book of John, chapter 4. When Jesus is tired, he's, he's passing by Samaria, and he sits by the well. And you know that a lady, a Samaritan woman, came to the well to draw water. So I'll try to make it short, simple. All right. So I'll read some portion. I might not read some portions. So just, just let's just flow together. And if you are blessed by this channel, subscribe and share it with someone. It's going to be a blessing. Amen. So when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciple has gone into the town to buy food. Oh, the disciple got money to buy food. That's another story for another day. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans back then. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that ask you for a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Wow! Very deep, very profound. This is how she replies. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. So she's still referring to a very natural conversation. Jesus is talking to an eternal message, powerful stuff, revelation stuff. Well, she is like, oh, okay, you can say whatever you want, man, but you don't have anything to grab the water. How, how, how to get this water from this well, which is so deep? She said, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. <laughs> but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I told you it's an eternal message, to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here and draw water. I know what you are thinking. I get what has all this got to do with prophetic and the prophet? Let's continue. Look at this. Book of John, chapter 4, verse 17. He told her, who is he? Jesus. Go, call your husband and come back. Oops. If you look at her reply, at verse 17, she says, I have no husband. Oops. If this is happening in a service right now, and the prophet comes and tells someone to a lady like this case, imagine this is a church scenario. The prophet is there, talks to the woman and says, go and call your husband. And she replies, I have no husband. Can you imagine the reaction of the church? 
False prophet. False prophet. False prophet. She has no husband. He said call husband. Must be a false prophet. Well, if you say that, Jesus is a false prophet. If you stop there. So she said, I have no husband. She replied. Let's read that. Huh? Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. Really? So was Jesus testing her? Maybe. Was Jesus seeing whether she will be humble enough to share the truth about her life? Maybe. But maybe that's the reason. Then he continued. Verse 18. The fact is, you have had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Wow, it's getting very quiet now, right? So you see, when the prophet goes to someone's life and tells you, Oh, in 2010, this is what happened. In 2020, whatever it is, right? When he mentions uh, bloodlines, when he mentions stuff like that, people get a bit conscious. Oh, with what spirit is he operating? Some people say. I said, well, ask Jesus. In what spirit is Jesus operating? Revealing this woman's past. Saying, yes, you are right. You have no husband. But you have had five husbands, and the one that you are living with is not even your husband. Be open to the prophetic. Now, still no big deal, because end of the day in ministry, you want to see the fruits. What's the fruit? What's the reason of you telling someone the past? What's the reason you telling someone you had five husbands? What's the reason you tell someone the, hus the one you are living with is not your husband? What for? She knows what. Of course, she's shocked for a stranger who doesn't know her by the well. You know, tell her, her her past. But what is happening? What is the significance of this story? Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Let me repeat. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. That means you know things that normal man does not know. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming. You'll worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews and so on and so forth. Jesus is preaching to her now. After Jesus prophesied, told her you have five husbands, the one you are living is not your husband. He go and give her a nice sermon. All right. The woman says, when Jesus says that God is spirit and his worship, worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. And the woman said, I know that Messiah, wow, she knows, called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain Everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Again, so what? What's the fruit? Okay. And Jesus' disciples return and stuff like that. Okay. Leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, this is important. Let me read again this part. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving a water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Wow. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know of, you know nothing of. And blah, 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 blah. Let me go straight to the point. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. 
What was her testimony? He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. What's the bottom line? Jesus wants the water. Tell her that he is the living water. He can give her a water that she can never thirst. Now, none of these revelations touch her heart. These are eternal revelations, eternal truth. He said, I, my well, he said, I, I, leave you, I give you living water. This water is alive. You never thirst again. Nothing. She said, okay, give me this water. But still nothing happened. Until Jesus revealed her past to her. So when you see the prophet moving in a, in a service and tell someone, this is what I see and this is what I see. And especially Prophet Jerome, when he does even a prophetic MRI, checking a person's body, health and all that. Sometimes ignoring the medical reports. Huh? Just through the spiritual eyes as a prophet. What is the significance? It's exactly what happened to this woman. People will testify. Just like this Samaritan woman. The whole town came to see Jesus because all she said was, he said, I met this man and he told me everything that I have done. That's it. They were curious enough to find out about this man, Jesus, who told this woman about her past. And they all believed in him. That's the power of the prophetic. That is the power of the prophetic. That's why even now with my family, why we share when Prophet Jerome has spoken over my life, my daughter's life, my son, the prophetic words that he has shared are so powerful. So it's so easy for us to share with others and to testify. That's the power of the prophetic. Stop being skeptic. Stop being in denial. Prophetic ministry is very, very powerful. So be blessed. Remember, if you deny the prophetic, you are denying the ministry of Jesus because Jesus ministered to people through the prophetic. This is very clear cut. This story of the Samaritan woman at the well, it's a very clear cut on the power of the prophetic. So be blessed and be open to the prophetic ministry. I want to thank my spiritual father, Prophet Jerome, that... Uh, for what he is doing through the PJFM ministry, uh, touching hundreds of nations of the world. Thank you guys for watching. As I said, subscribe to this channel and share it with your loved ones and your friends. Be blessed. Faiket Luari speaking from Uncensored Truth Channel. Bye-bye.